We're coming up to the fall holy days. This year has gone by very, very quickly. Trumpets, atonement, Feast of Tabernacles, last great day. Trumpets, when we expect Jesus Christ to return and the saints to all be resurrected and given a spiritual body. God's end game for establishing a family for the kingdom of God. The sermon will be taken all from John 6 today. We're going to talk about eating bread. The beginning part of John 6, of course, is the story of the miracle of feeding the 5,000. Now, it just says 5,000 men. There could be women. There could be some children. Jesus starts this by saying, how are we going to feed these people? And one of the apostles comes up and says, hey, I know a kid that got five loaves and two fishes. Okay, let's feed them with five loaves and two fishes. Five of these. Now, I didn't bring any fish with me, but I did have a two-piece fish dinner at Culver's the other day, so I know what two fish look like. How was he going to do this? Did you ever wonder, did he get five apostles and put one loaf in each basket? And as he handed one out, another one appeared? Or did a whole basket appear to everybody that was going out for both the bread and the fish? We don't know. Or maybe he tore it in half and gave half to one person, and all of a sudden he had a whole one to give to the next person. I wondered about that when I was reading this. And of course, what did the people say after he collected the 12 baskets of leftovers from the five loaves and two fishes? They said in verse 14, this is truly the prophet Jesus says back in verse 26, when people came to him again, you seek me because you are ate the bread, not for the sign. In other words, they didn't recognize the miracle. They just wanted another free meal. They didn't care how he produced the meal. But Jesus left this as a miracle, a sign that he could feed 5,000. Now, those of you who have been around worldwide for a long time, remember feasts we had over 10,000 people. Wisconsin Dells, Poconos, Squaw Valley, and even in Missouri, we had our own tabernacles. Now, there was a quarter right down the middle. So imagine feeding half of everybody that came to the feast with five loaves and two fish. How long did it even take to pass out all the food to everybody? And yet, the people didn't recognize the miracle. They just enjoyed the food. People wanted another sign. He just gave them a great sign, and they are asking for another sign. So in verse 27, and let me find it here. Well, let's start in verse 26. Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Don't labor for the food which perishes but for the food which endures for everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. Now he's starting to get to his main subject of this chapter. If you go down to verse 32, and Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. 
For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Now bread, in many cultures, stands for basic necessities and living conditions. You've heard expressions like the breadwinner, which in our culture means the person who makes the most money to feed the family or the breadbasket, which is a geographical area that produces a lot of food, but is given the name the breadbasket. Or how about bread is the staff of life? That's an expression in our culture. Bread is the staff of life. Bread is necessary for life. And Jesus is saying, yeah, Moses gave you the manna, or God gave you the manna through Moses. I'm giving you life. So I am the bread that the Father has sent down. And finally he says in verse 35, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. It's no longer a physical bread. It's now believing in Jesus Christ will sustain your life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that you have seen me, and yet you don't believe. So he uses the physical bread, the miracle of the physical bread, to try to point the direction to the fact that he is the bread of life that could give them life. All that the Father gives me I will come to me, and he's... And, and the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. Verse 39, this is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. What's the last day? Feast of Trumpets. So if you eat the bread that Christ brought, which is normally... We consider the Passover, but it's also all the teachings of Jesus Christ. He will give you eternal life at the last day, the day of trumpets when he returns to the earth and all the true Christians are resurrected, given a spiritual body, and those who are left alive on the earth just rise up in the clouds and are given a spiritual body because you've eaten the bread that Jesus Christ has brought down. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 40. The connection between Passover and trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets, this is the end game. This is the day God has been waiting for. This is the day we have been waiting for three days from now. Now one of these years, he will return. I'm not sure he'll return this year. He could. He could pick any Feast of Trumpets to return. Verse 47. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Believing in him, obeying his commandments, wanting his way of life, is taking in the bread from heaven, which is Jesus Christ. Verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. And verse 54, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Trumpets, the day we are changed. 
the day all our aches and pains go away. The day we are given a new spiritual body. I just lost a friend, a Marine friend in Wyoming, Richard Dix, died of Parkinson's. I know Richard Dix because when I first went to the Feasting Glacier in 2016, he was in charge of parking. And he was the one who first greeted me when I came in, saw the Marine Corps emblem on the side of my RV. We became good buddies. About two years later, he came down with Parkinson's. I did visit him several times when I was in Wyoming. He will have a new body. He suffered greatly. He will have a new body. Joe Camarada, a deacon in the church in Phoenix, who I spent several feasts with. We volunteered together at several feasts together. He died of COVID. He will have a new body. You will have a new body. All your aches and pains and diseases and problems will be gone. Because of the fact that somebody brought down the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ. You will have a new body if you continue to eat of the bread that Jesus Christ continually gives us. So remember when trumpets comes, and maybe you're eating a meal at the feast. Think about it when you raise your loaf of bread. I'm really tempted to take a bite. <laughs> that this represents Jesus Christ's teachings. That he is a true bread of life and will give you eternal life.